Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. Well, it's going to be that time of year, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, parts of our hunting seasons are winding down here this fall. It's always sad to talk about the end of the waterfall season. Of course, in northern Minnesota, you guys are done. Uh, in the central and southern zones now, you guys are also done after this weekend. Sunday, uh, the 28th being the closure date for those zones. I'm not happy about it. Of course, I'm never happy about it because I always feel like this is when duck hunting is starting to get good. And yeah, we got real cold around Thanksgiving and a lot of birds did migrate. But normally, when those big mallards come down, that's about when things start to get really good uh, where I'm at here in that some right on the border of the southern and central zone pretty much. But it would have been nice to be able to go down into southern Minnesota and hunt a few more days, uh, but that's gone. And not everybody's happy about it, but that's the way it is uh, because some people didn't want to see it anymore, so they complained about it, and the DNR did actually change that. So in any case, we'll see if it stays that way in the future. That means if you want to chase waterfowl other than Canada geese, you're going to have to travel south. And uh, I was fortunate enough to do that. Uh, last year, I had a pretty epic trip with our next guest right here, Corey Loeffler. Corey, how's it going, man? It's going great. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh you actually went back down recently to one of the places we went to last January. You were down in Oklahoma at Falco recently. How did that trip go? Yeah, it was awesome. Just like any other Falco experience. Uh, those guys do it right down there. They have an absolutely amazing lodge, great hunting, great food. Uh, the, the guys, the guides, the owners, they're all awesome people. So it's a blast. Um, you, you can't really explain it any other way than that. You had a bunch of, there's a bunch of guys that were there that converged on Falco for that trip. You might, it must've been some sort of big shindig that we're going to find out more about later, I'm assuming, or some sort of uh, big old get together with some friends and brands. Yeah, it was just a big old get together with uh, all the Falco rowdy friends, I guess. So uh, there was a bunch of different brands and companies represented down there. I was fortunate enough to be one of the, the guests. So we got to enjoy the Falco experience with a bunch of industry partners uh, and industry friends that typically only see once or twice a year. So it, it's good. Uh, some uh, long lost friends, I guess you'd call it. How was the hunting? The hunting was pretty good. It was, um, man, it was, it was really good a couple of days. And then we just struggled with some weather and some other pressure stuff with the birds on a couple of days. So uh, all in all, it was a lot of fun. And we got to see a few really, really big spins of, of little geese do it, which is not super common for what we let, well, you know, what we normally see in Minnesota. So those little geese can definitely put on a show if you let them and um, watch and, you know, if spin and work the decoys is, it's an eye opening experience. Yeah. I, you know, we get little bunches of little geese here in Minnesota. Uh, not like it is down South down there. I had no idea it was like that further South. I'm used to these big Canada's and the EPPs that we get through here. Um, and I've always heard, and I, t I know we've talked about this on the show. I've always heard that those little, little Canada geese are like working snows, but they really are like, it, it feels like you're hunting snow geese. They're just a different color bird. Yeah, absolutely. And they feed a lot of times with snow geese. So the one hunt, uh, let's see, typically we hunted out of an A-frame style blind on the edge of a field. And then one of the hunts, we actually put um, dark, uh, like Canada goose socks, dark socks and light socks out. And we hid underneath those sock style decoys, um, so a sock being like a wind sock style and um, we just laid on back rests in uh, half whites those sicko whites that we were running around with last year put white bibs on and a marsh colored jacket and then kind of covered up with um, light and dark colored decoys laid under the decoys it was very very successful hunt very um, kind of a unique way of hiding but very effective I bet you didn't uh, have any good food while you were down there either. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I started out, I had shot a deer in South Dakota on, oh, it was like Saturday, last Saturday, 
And I shot that deer. I got it hung up. I saved the heart and I saved the call fat. I brought that. Well, I saved the whole deer, but I brought those two things with me. And I hit the road to Falco about nine hours later. And uh, we threw that, uh, just like Corey Loeffler fashion, I guess we <laughs> turned the flat top off. On, and as soon as I got there, so we had some deer heart wrapped in call fat, and that was my entire supper that first night. Everyone had got done eating, but I showed up about 10 p.m., so uh, I was a latecomer around there, and it was it was kind of wild. Now, call fat something kind of new to me. I've been hearing more and more about it in the last uh, couple of years. Explain to people what call fat is. It's kind of that spider web looking fat that would line the um, the intestines or the abdomen, abdominal fat, so to say. And I'm sure you've seen it probably mm-hmm. in a gut pile here or there. But um, it, yeah, like I said, it looks like a giant spider web. And if done properly, and you don't um, nick the guts with your knife while you're while you're gutting it, or you don't shoot it in there if it's proper shot up in the up front in the boiler room you can utilize that call fat and wrap burgers i've had elk burger or no excuse me uh moose burgers wrapped in moose call fat before um i've done some stuff with some sausage wrapped in call fat and then now heart wrapped in the call fat so there you go it's right on the screen right there that's exactly what it looks like how did it turn out? Oh, it was perfect. I loved it. I ate nearly the entire thing because I didn't tell anyone that it was done, and uh, I didn't want to share it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was starving. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's Brian back there, right? That that cooks at uh, Falco. Yeah, yeah. Yep, how Brian, does, how the does, chef. Yeah. How does he feel about you coming back there and just turning his flat top on? He just smiles and says, have at it, buddy. Just clean up when you're done. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Man, it uh, is, this we, is, all those guys are such great guys down there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we love talking recipes and talking cooking and techniques and stuff. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. That, uh, that Falco experience, every part of it, every step along the way is um, – just kind of mind blowing, really. It's a great place. It's fun. Tell us how you like to make venison heart. Oh, that was wrapped in call fat, seasoned with a little bit of salt and garlic salt and pepper and fried in a little butter on the flat top. So you just wrapped the whole heart? Or did you? Oh, no. Sorry. I diced. Yeah. I diced the heart up into like one inch cubes, basically, trimmed some of the. Um, the uh, what would be the ventricles mm-hmm. off and uh, trim some of that stuff off and some of the hard harder tissue that's in the heart and just ate the just ate the good stuff. It's one of my favorite cuts. Oh, it's delicious! And I know that's one Dan's with us here, of course. And Dan, whoop, we just lost Dan. Just shot uh, shot a deer, and he's got you're ready to cook up that heart, aren't you, Dan? Okay, good talk. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in the boonies. Yeah, he's he's off deer hunting in Wisconsin right now. Dan, are you, can you, if you can hear me, are you seeing any ducks and geese over there in northwest Wisconsin oh, right now? The lake the lake's loaded. It is. Yep, it's loaded with gold eyes, Canada's mallards, you name it. Got did you end it. up Did you end up buying a, a license to shoot some waterfowl? No. No, I've given the Wisconsin DNR enough of my money to be over here as it is. And uh, uh, time to chase deer for the amount of money we paid to do that. So, yeah, for sure. That's what we're after. All right. Corey, what's what's new in the DRC shop right now? We got going on up well, there. Well, big, big news right now. Rue started spotting, came into heat while I was in Falco. That would be last week. She's on about day six or seven of spotting so big things should be coming i am going to take a drive uh down to arkansas that's where the stud dog is that i have lined up and uh chaos is his name very very nice looking dog physically and pedigree wise Uh, so that'll be uh chaos 
the chaos. That'll be a little bit of a chaotic litter this this uh, winter, but uh, we're really looking forward to it. A lot of people want to get their hands on those Roo pups, so super excited for that, and uh, can't wait. I love that picture of Roo right there. <laughs> that was her first goose retrieve ever. And that bird came equipped with a aluminum band on one leg and a plastic tarsal band on the other leg. So of course it did. Pre- pretty special <laughs> goose. Pretty special picture. Pretty special little uh, dog too. It it fills me with the warmth and joy of the holiday season. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, she did set the she did set this year's Falco blind retrieve record at 400 yards. Uh, Hen Mallard that JD had winged, and uh, yeah, that was a that was a big one. I uh, pretty much lost almost lost sight of her. She I think lost sight of me because I was wearing all camo and had a uh, tree line for a backdrop, so I had to pick up a dive bomb silhouette goose decoy that we were using i picked that up and used that to cast her and give her hand signals when she was way back there and uh by golly she picked it up in not very many whistles honestly and uh it was pretty cool we had a a whole bunch of clients out that day and they were blown away at it with that so conservation's finest tool right there a well-trained retriever 100 percent uh, especially, uh, I, you know, it's, you're talking about waterfall, but especially, you know, if you're pheasant hunting or upland hunting or something like that, you won't find most of your birds without a dog out there that you shoot. So especially if they got any life left in them. Yeah. Got to have a good one. All right, Corey. Well, uh, thanks for the update. Uh, sound like a fun trip down there. Good luck with, uh, with Rue this week and, uh, and the rest Thank of the you. fall. And thanks for the time on the show, man. Yeah, absolutely. That was a blast. Thanks a lot. Check them out, DRC Calls. Uh, find them online on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and all the usual social media channels. Corey, thank you very much. Thank you. 852 million acres of public land. 147 million private properties. All in the palm of your hand. The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx.